Here we're trying a second question on partial fractions for core 4. Okay, so they give us a function f of x, and they tell us that x can't be negative 2 or x can't be a third, otherwise the denominators would be 0. And they say find the values of a, b and c such that the following is true. They have given us the form of this partial fraction because we have a linear on top and a cubic on bottom, it's a partial fraction, and it's a over the first one, b over the second one, and c over the second one squared. So we're going to write down the following to start with for part A. We're going to write down that 15 subtracts 17x, all divided by 2 plus x, 1 subtract 3x squared, is therefore equivalent, because they tell us, of a over 2 plus x, plus b over 1 subtract 3x, plus c over 1 subtract 3x, all squared. Our next line is to make this side have the denominator 2 plus x, 1 minus 3x squared, and equate it to the other side, which means we're going to equate the numerators. Our next line can be 15 subtract 17x, is therefore equal to, when we uh, make the denominator 2 plus x, 1 minus 3x squared, the a must be times by 1 subtract 3x squared, the b must be times by the 2 plus x and 1 of the 1 minus 3x's, and the c just gets multiplied by 2 plus x. Okay, that's our first line there. Now let's use some substitutions. Let's let, to start with, let's say why don't we let x be negative 2? So that this here and this disappears. If x is negative 2, this side here would be equal to 49, and that would be equivalent to just this here, okay, which would be equal to 49a. And this implies that a must be equal to 1. Okay, next we would let x be equal to 1 third. The reason we would do that is this would disappear and this would disappear here. Okay, when we work out 15 subtract 17 multiplied by a third, we get 28 over 3. And that must be identical to this goes, this goes, 2 and a third, and 2 plus 1 third is equal to 7 thirds. C, so this tells us the C must be equal to 4. Okay, now we've got ourselves two of the terms. We need to find our b. Easiest thing to do here is to let x be something simple that wipes most of the things out. Let x be 0. This side would be equal to 15. This side here would be equal to a. This side here would be equal to 2b. And this here would be equal to 2c. Now we know what a is, we know what c is, so we can substitute those in, so we've got 15 must be equal to a, which is 1, plus 2b, plus 2 times c, which is 8, so 15 must be equal to 9 plus 2b, and now we can solve for b, take off um, the 9, so 15 take away 9 is 6, divide by 2, this tells us clearly that b is equal to 3. So let's write our final answer out, f of x. f of x is therefore equal to, or is identical to, um, it's going to be a, which is 1 over 2 plus x. Okay, and then b, which is going to be plus 3 over 1 subtract 3x. And then c is going to be plus 4 over 1 subtract 3x, all squared. And so we have done our first part, find the values of a, b, and c. Okay, next, we're asked to find the value of this integral, the integral of f of x dx. Key thing here, give your answer in the form p plus ln q. p and q must be integers, or whole numbers. So if we're integrating f of x, integral between negative 1 and 0, f of x, instead of integrating this complicated thing, we're going to integrate the partial fractions here, which is 1 over um, 2 plus x plus 
3 over 1 minus 3x. Plus 4 over 1 subtract 3x all squared with respect to x, dx, don't forget that. Now, we should realise that this is going to look like a LUN answer when we integrate it. So is this one here. However, this one is not a LUN. This one's going to be a standard uh, integral, a standard integral by reverse of the chain rule. So let's do each of these. This is going to be equal to. This one here is, put a square brackets round, is going to be LUN of modulus 2 plus x. This one here, is the top the differential of the bottom? Well, nearly it is, apart from it should be negative 3 if it was perfect. So this is going to be negative ln 1 subtract 3x. And lastly, this one, I'm going to do this off at the side here, this is clearly 4, 1 subtract 3x to the minus 2. Okay, so if we're integrating that with respect to x, we add 1 to the power, so we have 1 subtract 3x to the minus 1. Uh, we divide by the minus 1, so we've got a 4 here. We divide by minus 1, and we divide by the differential of the brackets, which is minus 3. So we get ourselves 4 thirds, uh, 1 minus 3x to the minus 1. Okay, which can be written as 4 over 3, 1 minus 3x. So this would be plus 4 over 3, 1 subtract 3x. Close the brackets and it's in between negative 1 and 0. Okay, firstly let's put 0 in. So this is going to be ln 2, subtract ln 1, plus 4 thirds. And we subtract the answer when we put minus 1 in. It would be ln 1. Subtract ln 4 plus a third. And now we can just uh, subtract the two answers together. Remember ln 1 is actually 0, so there's nothing there. And here we're going to have ln 2 um, subtract negative ln 4, which would be plus ln 4. And we're going to have 4 thirds subtract 1 third, which is 1, which would be ln 2 times 4, which is 8 plus 1. So, uh, writing it in that correct form, I would actually write as P, which is 1, plus ln Q, which is ln 8. So my P is equal to 1, and my Q is equal to 8. And I've done for this question. P and Q are integers.